I like the Thai baht. Um, you know, I think the last time I was here, I said, you know, close out your baht longs. Uh, but that was basically just on too much over positioned into the baht. You know, things have corrected since then. So structurally, we like the baht just because you've got combination of current account surplus, um, which is not just driven by tourism at the moment, it's driven by lower shipping costs. I was going to add lower oil prices to that mix, but as you know, what's happened overnight. Um, so, you know, we're, we're watching that pair at the moment, we're still long, um, but going into general elections in May as well, I think there are a few risks building up. So, you know, we're long for now, I think it's still a good time to be long given, you know, we've got tourism numbers coming out, etc. So, so you'd be long for the very short term because an election risk is something that you don't want to play on the currency. We don't want to play the currency just because in Thailand, when you get into the elections, uh, you get this very binary outcome. So right of, now it's 34, 27. Yeah. Where does it go before elections? Um, I expect anything between sort of 34 to 33.5. Okay. Yeah. Just in terms of, I suppose, the interrelationship between the, the, the entirety of the EM basket and the US dollar, obviously what you were mentioning earlier in terms of being caught in the middle where you've got the, the bond market's telling you one thing, the Fed's telling the other, and it appears to be any kind of speculation in effects is, is stuck in the middle on that front. But if we were to see the continued flow that we have been seeing of late, uh, past couple of weeks, a lot of money flowing back into the, the USD, a lot of money flowing back into the Yuan, is there, is there any kind of reasonable expectation that we are going to see that to the detriment of EM flow? Because it has been coming off, whether it be in fixed income, that... You're not going to see any kind of requisite strength in a lot of these EM currencies moving forward? It will generally be at the detriment of EM flows in general. Um, but, you know, with that said, you know, we've got real rates which are quite high in the EM space. Mm -hmm. um, positioning is quite clean at the moment, bar what happened in sort of that January flow, but everything's gone back out now. Um, so positioning is quite light at this point. We've got real rates being really high. And the centre of growth is Asia, well, China at the moment, let's be more precise, right? Mm -hmm. um, and there are positive externalities across into EM Asia, but also EM LATAM, for example. So on that front, you know, to a certain extent, rates are expected to remain higher for longer. And because a big part of Asia didn't hike rates as rapidly, there's less chances of things breaking down in the near term as well. Also, so I think the inflation problem in, uh, in Asia is not, I mean, it is, it's not easy, but, but it's not as bad as the US. Exactly right. Um, but because they only came out of reopening much later than the states did, for example, um, I feel like that domestic demand momentum will keep going for a little bit longer. Um, so, you know, I don't expect markets here to be, or central banks here to be hiking rates too rapidly, but I don't expect them to be cutting too rapidly either, which will help sustain, you know, some resilience in Asian currencies.